it's Ali. I thought that I would do something for you guys today that was very highly requested after my last thrifty tingles video. After I showed you guys this book, I read a little bit of the story from this book and I didn't finish it and so many of you guys requested more reading out of this book so because of that I'm going to do a whole video I will finish the story that I started last time it was Beauty and the Beast First, I'll read uh, a new story, and then we'll finish with Beauty and the Beast. Before we get started, though, I do want to congratulate the three winners of the Tingle Hunt contest. Oh, down the table.
So we've got Beauty and the Beast. Rumpled stilt skin. The little match girl. The three little pigs. Little Red Riding Hood. Jack and the Beanstalk. Sleeping Beauty. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Steadfast Tin Soldier, Thumbelina, Mother Goose's Nursery Rhymes, Puss in Boots, Aesop's Fables, and The Ugly Duckling. been reading Rumpelstiltskin to my son quite a lot since I bought this book. In fact, it is the only story we've read out of here so far. And he hasn't wanted me to read any of the others. I think that he thinks that this book is called Rumpelstiltskin because <laughs> he'll always go grab it off his shelf and ask me to read Rumpelstiltskin Okay So I'll start with Rumpelstiltskin first because it's one of my favorites It begins on By the Brothers Grimm Retold by Jennifer Greenway Illustrated by Gary Cooley Once long ago there lived a miller who had a beautiful daughter. One day, the king of the land happened to be passing by the mill. To make himself seem more important to the king, the miller boasted that his daughter knew how to spin straw into gold. The king, who liked gold very much, was most impressed. I should like to meet this daughter of yours, the king said to the miller. Bring her to my palace tomorrow morning, and we shall see if what you say is true. When the miller told his daughter what he had done, she was very upset. But there was nothing she could do. So early the next morning, she presented herself at the king's palace. The king led her into a large room that was completely filled with straw. Then he showed her to a spinning wheel and said, Now you must get to work, but first let me tell you this. If you have not spun all the straw into gold by tomorrow morning, you will pay. Then the king left the room and locked the door behind him. As soon as the king was gone, the, m 
miller's beautiful daughter began to cry despairing that she had no idea how to spin straw into gold just as she was sure there was no hope for her the door of the room creaked open a strange little man came walking in he looked at her and said tell me miller's daughter why are you crying the king has ordered me to spin this straw into gold, she sobbed. Unless I do, he will have me put to death, and I have no idea how to do it. Oh, that is no problem, replied the strange little man. What will you give me if I do it for you? The miller's daughter stared at him in astonishment. I... I will give you my necklace, she replied. Very well, said the little man, and he accepted the necklace. Then he sat down at the spinning wheel and quickly set it whirring. Round and round it turned. Soon the bobbin was full of gold thread. Then the little man put on another bobbin on the spinning wheel. Soon that one was full too. And on he went, all night long, until he had spun all the straw into shining gold thread. The miller's daughter was overjoyed, and she thanked the little man with all her heart. Then, as the sun rose over the horizon, the strange little man vanished. Soon, the king came to see if the miller's daughter had spun the straw into when he saw all the gold thread, he was amazed and delighted. Yet the sight of so much gold only made the king greedier. So he led the miller's daughter to another room. This room was larger than the first and also filled with straw. You must spin all this straw into gold by morning, the king told the miller's daughter, or you will lose your life. As soon as the king had gone and locked the door behind him, the miller's daughter burst into tears. Then the door slowly opened, and in walked the same strange little man. Good day, miller's daughter, he said. What will you give me if I spin the straw into gold for you this time? I... I will give you my ring, she replied. The strange little man accepted the ring from the young woman's finger. Then he sat down at the spinning wheel and began spinning the straw into gold. And as soon as he was finished, he disappeared. Soon after dawn, the king came to see if the miller's daughter had completed her task. His eyes grew wide at the brilliance of the gold, but it only made him want to have more. So he led the miller's daughter to a third room. This room was even larger, and it was piled to the ceiling with straw. You must spin all this straw into gold before the sun rises tomorrow, the king told the miller's daughter. If you fail, you will lose your life. But if you succeed, I will marry you and make you my wife. The king was thinking to himself that, though she was only a miller's daughter, he would never find a richer wife anywhere. After the king had left the miller's daughter and locked the door behind him, the strange little man once again appeared. What will 
will you give me this time for spinning all this straw into gold? He asked the miller's daughter. The girl began to sob. I have nothing left to give you, she answered. It's all right, said the little man. Just promise me this, that when you are queen, you will give me your first child. The miller's daughter hesitated. Then she gave the strange little man her promise. Who knows if I shall ever be queen, she thought. Besides, if I do not agree, then I will surely lose my life tomorrow. So the little man sat down at the spinning wheel and set it turning. On and on it whirred, till all the straw in the room had been spun into shining gold. The next morning, the king came in saw the immense gold treasure shimmering like the light of a thousand suns. He married the miller's beautiful daughter that very day. She was now a queen with fine robes and a crown on her head. Within a year, the queen gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. She was overjoyed to have a child of her own. In her happiness, she forgot her promise to the strange little man. One day, as the queen was playing with her baby son, the little man visited her. I have come to claim what you promised me, he said, stretching out his arms toward the child. The queen was horrified. Please do not take my little son, she pleaded. I will give you anything, anything you wish. Only leave me my son. Then she offered the strange little man all the wealth and riches in the kingdom, if he would only spare her child. At first, the little man refused. The queen began to weep so sorrowfully that he took pity on her. Very well, he said. I will give you three days to guess my name. If you do so in that time, you may keep your little son. But if you fail, the child must be mine. And with that, the strange little man The queen stayed awake all night. She thought of every name she had ever heard. Then she took her candle and went to the palace library and searched through all the books for strange and unusual names. The next morning, when the little man appeared, the queen began asking him, Is your name Peter? Is your name John? Is your name Charlemagne? time the little man replied, Oh no, that is not my name. Then the queen recited all the names she knew, one after the other. But to each one, the little man replied, Oh no, that is not my name. Finally, she could think of no more names, and the little man went away. The queen summoned to her all the learned men of the kingdom, and asked them to tell her all the strange and unusual names they had ever heard. She sent out her servants far and wide to collect as many odd names as they could. When the little man came the next day, she asked him, Is your name Big Boots? Is your name Turtle Beak? Can your name be Mutton Chop? or crooked knees. But to each name, the little man replied as before, Oh no, that is not my name. The queen did not know what to do. 
On the third day, one of the queen's servants came to her and told a curious story. I searched far and wide, but I could not find a single new name. The man began. Then, on my way back through the mountains, I came upon a tiny cottage. A fire was blazing in front of it, and a little man was dancing around the fire on one foot. As he danced, he sang this song. I'll rest tomorrow and bake today. Then I'll take the queen's son away. For no one will ever guess who I am. And that Rumpelstiltskin hands for joy. When the little man came the next morning, she asked him, Is your name Henry? No, nope, he replied. Is your name Roland? No. Then can your name be Rumpelstiltskin? The little man's mouth fell open. Who told you that? Who told you that? He shrieked. He became so cross, he tugged at his little beard and stamped his foot. He stamped so hard that the ground cracked open beneath him and swallowed him up. And that was the last anyone ever saw. Beauty and the Beast, retold by Samantha Easton, illustrated by Ruth Sanderson. There once was a rich merchant who, through no fault of his own, lost his entire fortune. All he had left was a small house in the country where he and his family would now have to live. The merchant had three daughters. The youngest was so lovely that everyone called her Beauty. The merchant had always given his daughters the best of everything, and the two eldest girls were very spoiled. They hated their new home and did nothing but complain about it. Beauty, however, tried to make the best of things. A year had passed in this way, when the merchant received some good news. One of his ships, which he had believed lost, had come into port with all its cargo safe and sound. Beauty's sisters were overjoyed. They were sure the family would soon be as rich as before. As their father prepared to leave for town, they begged him to bring them back fine silk dresses and jeweled necklaces. Beauty asked for nothing. The merchant noticed her silence. How about you, Beauty? What would you like? I only wish you to come home safely, Father, the girl replied. But there must be something I can bring you, said Beauty's father. Very well, she said. Bring me a rose. None grow here, and I am so fond of them. So the merchant set off for town. When he arrived, he learned that all the cargo had been stolen. There was
was nothing for him to do but turn around and head home. When the merchant was only a few miles from home, a terrible storm blew up. The snow fell so heavily that the merchant could not go on. He looked for shelter, but there was none in the forest. He was growing desperate when he spotted a path through the trees. He steered his horse onto it. As he went down the path, the snow cleared and the air grew warmer. Soon the merchant was on a paved road. On either side were orange trees heavy with ripe fruit. How strange, he thought. He kept going until he came to a white. the rooms, but he could find no one at home. He stopped in a room with a blazing fire. Thinking the fire must have been made for someone who would soon appear, he sat down before it and fell asleep. The merchant awoke in the morning to find a full breakfast set out for him. He hungrily devoured it, then walked through the palace, palace once again, looking for his mysterious host he could find no one. Finally, he decided to be on his way and went outside to find his horse. In the garden, the merchant saw a rose bush covered with beautiful flowers. At least I can bring beauty her gift, he thought, as he plucked one. Then a terrible voice above him said, Thief, is this how you repay the beast's kindness? Rose will cost you your life. The merchant turned to see a fearsome beast looming over him. Please forgive me, sir, he cried, falling to his knees. I only wish to bring a rose to my daughter, Beauty. Then he told the beast his story. When the merchant had finished, the beast said, Very well, I will spare your life, but one of your daughters must agree to take your place. The merchant was horrified, but he accepted the condition, and the beast let him go, still carrying the rose for beauty. When the merchant reached home, his daughters eagerly ran to meet him gave them the sad news that he was as poor as ever. Then he handed Beauty her rose. Here's what you asked for, he sighed, but you cannot imagine what it cost. His daughters asked him to explain. Upon hearing his story, the two older daughters turned on Beauty. It's all your fault, they said. You had to ask for a rose, and now look what you've I know, Beauty replied, and so it is only fair that I go to the beast in my father's place. Her father said he would not allow her to do this, but Beauty stood firm. After a week had passed, Beauty and her father set out for the beast's palace. The journey passed quickly. Soon they were walking down the road lined with orange trees. Although Beauty was frightened, she could not help marveling at the beast's gardens. They were full of fruit and flowers, even though it was winter.
before, the palace was beautifully lit, but there was no one to be seen. Inside, a fire blazed in the same room, and a big meal had been set out. But Beauty and her father were both too upset to eat. After a while, the door opened, and in walked the beast. The beast was horrible to look at, but Beauty greeted him politely. He asked her if she had come willingly, and she replied in a steady voice, Yes, beast. The beast then told the merchant to go home, and he gave him two chests of gold to take with him. Beauty and her father thought they would never see each other again. They embraced, and the merchant reluctantly rode away. Beauty expected the beast to kill her at once, but he left her alone. When it grew dark, Beauty found herself before a room with her name written above it in gold letters. The room had a graceful bed and a matching dressing table. The wardrobe was full of lovely gowns. Surely the beast would not give me these things if he meant to kill me, Beauty thought. Then, feeling much better, she fell asleep. The next morning, Beauty awoke to find breakfast set out for her. All day long, she amused herself by wandering through the palace. Sometimes, she heard music and voices, but she saw no one. I believe this is where we left off last time. came, Beauty found a delicious supper waiting for her in her room. She was just sitting down to eat when the beast knocked at her door. Beauty, he said softly, may I please watch you eat? Beauty trembled with fear, but she replied bravely, yes, beast. So the beast sat beside her, and they spoke of many things. To Beauty's surprise, the beast was a pleasant companion, but at the end of the meal, the beast asked, Do you love me, Beauty? Will you marry me? How can I answer, Beauty said. Tell the truth, replied the beast. Then no, dear beast, Beauty replied gently. I cannot marry you. Very well, the beast said sadly. Every night, the beast asked Beauty the same question, and even though she refused him, he treated her very kindly. Soon, Beauty began to enjoy living in the palace. Whenever she wished for anything, some embroidery thread or a kitten to keep her company, her wish was granted at once. She also grew very fond of the beast, who was kind and generous to her. Despite his dreadful appearance, Beauty looked forward to the evenings when he would sit with her. Yet Beauty missed her family, especially her dear father, and she slowly grew pale and ill from a longing. At last, the beast asked her what was wrong. I only wish I could see my family again, dear beast, Beauty replied. The beast sighed. If you go, he said mournfully, it will be the death of but I will only go for a month, Beauty promised. Then I will come back and stay with you always. Then go, said the beast, but be sure to keep your promise, or you will find me dead. The beast gave Beauty a silver ring told her to put it on that night and wish she were home. Tomorrow morning you will be there, the beast said, and when you wish to come back to me, put the ring on your finger when you go to bed. Then turn at once and say, I wish to be with my dear beast again. By morning you will be here. 
That night, Beauty filled a trunk with gifts for her father and sisters. Then she put on the ring and wished herself home. The next morning, she was there. Her father was overjoyed. Her sisters, her sisters pretended they were, too. But secretly, they were jealous of Beauty, because the Beast had given her many expensive and beautiful things. One day, Beauty carelessly told them that she had promised the Beast to return in a month. Let us make her stay longer, said one of her sisters. Then the beast may get angry with her and not let her come back. When it came time for Beauty to go, her sisters burst into tears. If you leave, we shall die of grief, they wailed. So Beauty stayed one day, and then another, and another. But she began to worry about the beast. One night, Beauty had a terrible dream. In it, the beast appeared before her and said, Beauty, you broke your promise, and now I shall die. Terrified, Beauty woke with a start. She placed the ring on her finger, turned at once, and said, I wish to be back with my dear beast again. The next morning, Beauty was in the beast's palace. All day she waited for evening when the beast would visit her. But evening came, and the beast did not appear. Beauty ran through the palace calling his name, to no avail. Next, she ran into the garden. There she saw the beast lying very still beneath the rose bushes. Beauty ran to him. He is dead, she sobbed, and it is all because of me. Just then, the beast's eyes opened. Oh, beast, Beauty cried, I'm so glad you're still alive. I never knew how much I loved you until this moment. Can you really love an ugly beast like myself? The beast asked. Yes, Beauty replied. Will you marry me, Beauty? Well, dear beast. Then there was a bright flash of light, and the beast vanished. In his place stood a handsome prince. He told Beauty he had been placed under a spell by a wicked fairy. He was doomed to remain in the form of a hideous beast until some maiden should fall in love with him. Beauty's love had broken the spell. Now the prince wished it. took Beauty back to the palace and introduced her to his mother and father, who, under the wicked fairy's spell, had been invisible. Then Beauty sent for her father and her sisters. She told them of the prince's spell and the coming wedding. And so the marriage of Beauty and her prince was celebrated with great joy, and they lived happily enough reading for tonight. It's time that you got some sleep. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. These fairy tales. I'll read you
more in the future if you like I hope you sleep well and have pleasant dreams and I'll be seeing you again commercial, the Sherry 3000 commercial, and you see several different Sherry models rotating on, it's rotating, kind of like, uh, I don't know, like model cars. Um, I was physically being rotated for that, and the way that I made that happen this. Yes.